What's up losers, KD3 here. Today I'm going to be giving you guys some tips to make some really good builds in Persona 3 Reload. No, I'm not going to be showing you how to make my builds because those require quite a bit of work. My intent with this video is to give the regular players a good idea of how they should be building their personas within the Velvet Room so they can get themselves through the game. So let's get into it. With my vision, I'll guide you all to victory. Sounds great! My first tip to start building strong personas is to bring lots of money. When you go into the Velvet Room, fusing, especially optimally, can be very expensive, even with the discounts. You won't be able to get a lot done if you don't bring a lot of money. So check out my money guide if you want to learn how to make tons of money in this game. My next tip for building strong personas is actually a tip for building the personas. Make sure that you take the stats of your persona into account. A common mistake that I see a lot of players make is that they will put any type of skill on any persona just because it does a lot of damage but then they'll wonder why it's not actually doing a whole lot of damage if your persona has more magic than strength it makes more sense to put magic skills on that persona not strength make sure you look at your stats carefully before you decide what skills to actually pass down to it next tip if you're using magic do not try to put as many elemental attacks on your persona as possible sure you can cover each different type of element but you're leaving a whole lot of damage on the table they don't let you carry multiple personas with you so that you can have one doing every type of damage. They want you to switch them around. What you really want are personas that specialize in a certain type of damage. Check out my Orpheus Telos. You can see that it's been made to specialize in electric damage and because of that we're going to be doing a lot of damage. Make sure that your damage dealers have skills that ensure that they can dish out as much as possible. So anything from damage boosting passives, attack buffs, defense debuffs, all of these can work for these types of personas. For more more down to earth build, we can check out my Bishamon 10. This is the persona that I used probably through half of my first playthrough because of how well he was built. He uses pierce attacks, so I have pierce boost and pierce amp. Since this is a physical attacker, I also have a crit boosting passive for some potential major damage. Mataru Kaja is there to boost attack power even further. I would replace it with auto Mataru if I could so I wouldn't have to waste a turn. Takunda is there to remove debuffs and I have Makara Karn to deflect ice attacks and potentially instant kill moves. For my ideal build, I would have Mataru Kaja, Takunda, and Makara Karn swapped out for auto Mataru, crit rate boost so that it stacks with crit rate amp, and drain wind so that weaknesses are covered. Having builds set up this way will net you a lot more damage in the long run. Here's how I choose what skills each type of persona inherits. My next tip for building strong personas is to be careful what you use when fusing a persona that you may be planning to use in battles. If you just want to get the compendium filled, that's okay, but you're missing out on a lot of potential by just using anything. Most personas can be created using a ton of different combinations, and using the right combo gives the result persona the potential to inherit some skills that can benefit it greatly. So for example, let's go into fusion search. I can build Venatus with two different combos, Captain Kid plus Chiyu and Hillel plus Senjula. On. Let's see what we get if we do the first combo. So one thing you may notice right off the bat is that this persona excels in strength, so magic is not what we want right now. It also has a slash skill with a high crit rate along with a critical hit boosting buff natively. So let's see what we can work with here. So charge is nice. We can get extra damage off of that. We can inherit strike skills and boosters should we choose to go that route. You've got arms master as well but we can pass that on through a skill card. Single target boost doesn't help much since masquerade is a multi target hitting move. So we can get some decent skills but let's check out what we can get with the other one. So right away we can see that we can get slash boost and slash amp which is very good for damage. Apt Pupil is also there. We also have the crit boosting passives, so this could be amazing. The only downside is that we can only take 4 skills. I would definitely grab multi target boost if I could, but I can just get a skill card for it instead later. Viola, you've just built a slash damage dealing crit dealing machine. 
If you'd like to see all of the different possible combinations to create a persona, you can use a fusion calculator to see all of the possible combos and see what's best for your desired persona. It breaks down what skills they can learn at what levels as well as what types of skills that they can inherit. This is an extremely useful tool for people going for 100% completion or desire to make certain builds for certain events. Have you ever fused a persona that had the potential to inherit a lot of amazing skills and thought to just stick the most useful ones on it just for a potential future? Future fusion. This is something that I like to do quite often with personas that I don't intend to use because in the future you may be able to create something really strong with it that will be able to inherit all of those amazing skills that you kept on the mule persona. Since I mentioned skill cards, here's a safety measure I like to take for things like this. I think everyone should duplicate their skill cards before you use them. When I got Arms Master and Spell Master, I duplicated them three times each before I used them at all. Sometimes you're not going to get everything that you want through inheritance alone due to either slot limits or your persona is just not having the right skills. But if you go and dupe, you can always have one in handy when you really need it. It doesn't take up time either so you might as well get to duping cards. You could just use the one skill card that you have but I don't think that's a very good idea because once you lose it, you're going to have to go and find it again and if it's one of those hard to find skill cards then you're going to be wasting a bunch of time going around in Tartarus praying that RNG is your friend that day. Another piece of advice I have is to hold on to your incense. I know it's tempting to use these right away to boost your persona stats, but think for a second. How often are you going to use that persona? You may end up replacing it pretty quickly. Save those for later in the game when you have stronger personas with more well put together builds. Trust me, you'll definitely need those for the enemies in the later game. And if you use my money guide, you'll be able to stock up on a bunch of these incense and your personas will be insanely powerful. And my final tip for building strong personas is to think of your equipment as an extension of your persona. What does that mean? Well, keep in mind that your gear has skills on it as well. Think of how you can get these skills to work with your other personas. I like to use gear that has some of the most powerful abilities on them so I don't have to put them on another persona. Here's some footage from my best gear video. I use Lucifer's Blade because it gives me a 25% damage boost to non-almighty magic, so that means I don't need to pass the skill down to element focus personas during fusion, and I can put another useful skill there instead. My armor of light makes it so that I take much less magic damage, so even if my persona is weak to an element, I'll take much less damage, so I can be greedier with personas if I want to trade safety for the extra damage. Shoes of light just have very high evasion and come with Ali dance if you don't have personas with firm stance or something. Shoes of bane are also good for avoiding dark instant kills, cause you know enemies love to spam those. Make sure you're thinking about how your gear can help your personas out when picking them. And that's all my tips for building really good personas in Persona 3 Reload. If you need any more help, make sure you check out my playlist. I've covered all different types of things in this game and I may be able to help you with something else that you may need help with. So make sure you check that out and I will see you guys on the next video. Goodbye.